Hello and welcome. In this episode, we will be exploring the recipe for the AeroPress done by the 2012 World Series winner, Charlene de Boussier of Belgium. Now in this series of AeroPress, we are just taking a look at all sorts of different ways that you can enjoy brewing with this tool. This particular episode, we're taking a look at a World Series winning recipe. You can take a look at the first video in this series by the link below or just check out the playlist of the AeroPress. So for this, we're just gonna dive right in. You'll notice uh, if you've watched the uh, original two videos for this series that this recipe has a lot of similarities. So what we're gonna do here is have 18.3 grams coarsely ground coffee. And I've ground almost as coarse as I can go with my current grinder. This is about good for French press. We're gonna try that out. Then we're gonna have 250 grams of water at 85 degrees Celsius or 185 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, we're gonna be doing an upright brew. Uh, I'll add the coffee. So I've actually already rinsed the filter. That's step one, where the filter goes in. Then we're gonna add the coffee and then we're gonna pour 40 grams to bloom and at 30 seconds, we're going to pour the rest and then immediately press. Okay, so let's get that 18.3 grams in. Like I said, we've rinsed the filter and added it. Uh, so now we just need to add our coffee. The coffee I'm using here is a lightly roasted natural Ethiopian. And we're hoping it comes out nice and juicy. Trying to be really precise here and do actually, well, yeah, 18.3. There we go. Now we're going to add 40 grams and then at 30 seconds we'll add the rest. So 40-ish uh, grams actually ended up doing 42. So this is actually uh, an example of where having a slow control kettle can be really helpful. All right, so we're at 30 grams and now we just, uh, we're at 30 seconds, so now we're going to add the rest up to 250 and then we're gonna immediately press. And I'm gonna press firmly. Um, since we're at uh, 185 degrees and I know there are some brighter notes in this coffee, I want to take advantage of pressure to try to get some of that out. 250, all right. We're gonna take this off here really quick. All right, so the instructions also indicate um, to not press completely. So I'm gonna stop as soon as it starts that hiss. Which will be right there. All right, I think we're gonna need it to cool for a moment. So I'm gonna give it a moment to cool and I'm gonna taste it and let you know what I think. Interesting. So I definitely did capture some of the brightness. I can taste like some of the fruit brightness that I know is in this coffee. Uh, it's largely dominated by just a lot of smooth sweetness. Really smooth, drinkable cup of coffee. Has a nice like richness of body to it as well. Um, smooth and sweet, that's nice. So I think one of the interesting things about this reminds me of the typical recipe that I use. Uh, but in that recipe, I add water to the carafe or cup beforehand. And then I use a bit more coffee as well. And there's a longer brew time and more of a press time. If we think about that, and then the kind of original AeroPress recipe, which called for making a concentrate. I mean, this, this feels in the mouth like, it's not like a concentrate, but it's definitely got like a thicker, silkier feel to it. Silkier perhaps is the right term. And it makes me think of the, so it makes me think of the original AeroPress recipe from that perspective. But this is really straightforward. Um, add your coffee, do a little bloom, and then add the rest and press immediately is a nice quick, nice quick recipe. I'm really enjoying that. So I think one of the things that we will discover as we explore more uh, AeroPress recipes, like world championship AeroPress recipes, is that the earlier recipes are more experimental. I was reading some interviews about the World AeroPress Championship, and it seems very clear that the early years of the championship, it was more about 
like having fun and experimenting and doing strange things or simple things and like making really delicious coffee. But as it's become more and more popular, it's become such uh, much more of a competition. And so people are getting really innovative and practicing and putting a lot of thought and effort into uh, coming up with a very specific result. I think the one thing you can definitely see is that there are so many different ways to brew a really good cup of coffee. And it's the kind of tool you can put a lot of innovation in. That's why I'm enjoying going through these World Series winners uh, because they obviously brew a good cup of coffee in one way or another. I think we're gonna find in some cases that it's very specific to a particular coffee. Uh, I think this kind of recipe you can do with any coffee and get something enjoyable. I am thinking that this recipe might be more enjoyable with perhaps a more chocolatey coffee. Something like Central South American might do better in this recipe. That's just my instinct. I'm tasting the like brighter notes of this coffee and it's still missing a little bit of the fruit. There's maybe a little bit of sourness in there, but it's still quite enjoyable. So that was the uh, 2012 World Series winner, Charlene de Buissier of Belgium. Uh, that was her recipe. I'll link to the World Air Press Champion uh, Championships website below uh, and the AeroPress website where you can check out a whole bunch of these recipes and try things out for yourself. If you have any questions, uh, please leave those in the comments below the video. Uh, any questions about this recipe or AeroPress or anything in general, always happy to chat. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.